Hello and welcome to another episode of Into the Scriptures. My name is Wesley Vital, and today we're going to talk about the story of Belem or Balaam. Now, I was doing my morning study and I was reading through the story of Balaam and something actually caught my eye. Now, when I read this story multiple times before, it, th- what I focus on is usually the donkey when the father opened up the donkey's mouth. But I was, as I was reading um, this time, I wanted to pay more attention to the things around it. And the reason why I wanted to pay you know, more attention to it is because I found a verse in Micah chapter 6, 5. In Micah chapter 6, 5, it says, and this is the father speaking to the Israelites or to his people, which we are. It says, O my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Behor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that you may know the righteousness of Yahuwah, the Lord. So when I you know, came across this verse, I was interesting. The father is telling us to remember this event. So there's something about this this event specifically that he wants us to remember, that he wants us to to apply. Now, most people just like I usually do, just think about the donkey, uh, the donkey situation, uh, which we're going to read. But uh, there's more to it. There's a lot more to it, because as I was reading uh, in Numbers 22, I I noticed some things that I didn't actually see before. um, And I regret not seeing it. But now that I see it, I, I can't stop seeing it. So. Another aspect also to keep in mind, one of my favorite verses is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, where Paul says, Now all these things happen unto them. This is, of course, talking about uh, previously was talking about the children of Israel in the wilderness. And Paul saying, Now all these things happen unto them for in samples or examples. And they are written for our admonition, admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So these stories and these situations are told to us for our benefit, for our examples, for us to learn from. So finding Micah and the father specifically saying to remember the event with Balaam and Balak and Moab, um, it's important. So let's actually go to that story. And that's what I wanted to do for this podcast, uh, a podcast episode today is go to that story and let's read it because I, I, you'd be amazed just like as, as I was amazed when I was reading it, the, the connections and the righteousness, just like Micah says, the righteousness of Yahuwah is, is you can see it, his mercy, his love. You can see it in that story, the entire story, not just when he's with the donkey part, when the donkey opened his mouth to speak, but all over it, all over it. So let's actually go to that verse uh, in Numbers 22. And we're going to start in verse 1 and we're going to read it. Now, uh, I'm going to read a couple of verses, but then I'm going to go to some other verses that connect with what we're reading. So in Numbers 22, verse 1, 2, and 3, it says, And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab. On this side of Jordan by Jericho, and Balak, or Bal, uh, yeah, Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all the all that Israel had done to the uh, to the Amorites, and Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many, and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Now they were distressed and they feared, of course, because they were many and what they did to the Amorites, but there's something important here. If we actually correlate to the verse, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 25, this is a promise that the Father gave his children, the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 2, verse 25 says, This day will I begin to put the dread of you and the fear of you upon the nations. Under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you? So the father promised this to the Israelites. He promised this, that the other nations will tremble. The other nations will fear. And now you see that he's true to his promise. He is true to his promise. Because in verse 3, what the, uh, the, the Moabites do? What did Moab do? They were sore afraid. They weren't just fearful they were sore afraid they were in distress they were in distress and this is what the father promised 
This is what the father promised. And I love this. Just this one aspect shows that he is, when he promises, when the father promises, his promise is sure that he will be faithful to complete it. He'll be faithful to complete it. Now let's continue read. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, now shall this company lick, uh, uh, now shall this company lick up all that are around about us as the oxen licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was the king of the Moabites at the time. He sent, he sent messengers, therefore, unto Baal, uh, Balaam, or Balaam, the son of Behor, to, uh, to Pithar, sorry, I, I butcher names, Pithar, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Now, this is how, remember, they're distressed and they're fearful. Okay, the uh, Moab. So here you have the king, Balak. Okay, he's he's scared. He's just in distress. So what is his natural thing? Is he's already coming, uh, 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 trying to figure out what to do with them. Okay. Now when I say try to figure out what to do with them, because we're about to read that his response from being distressed or fearful is try to get rid of them. Is trying to get rid of them. Okay. And to be honest, I personally believe if they didn't do anything. If they just left him alone, even though you were fearful from them, if they just left him alone, nothing would have happened. But because his response that we're going to read shortly is that he did do something, there's an issue. But there's a verse I want to go to again is Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, and it's verse 5. I will have 4 and 5. We'll do 4 and 5. And it says... Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you come forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against the Balaam, the son of Behor of Pithar of Mesopotamia, to curse you, nevertheless, Yahuwah, or the Lord thy God, would not hearken unto Balaam, or Balaam, but, the, but Yahuwah, or the Lord thy God, turneth the curse into a blessing unto thee, because Yahuwah thy God loved thee, or the Lord." So what we're about to read is that you see that he turned to uh, Balaam because we're going to see that Balaam had he was known for being connected to the father here. OK, and you see how in Deuteronomy it says that because they went and tried to, you know, curse the children of Israel. OK, this is they were so afraid and in distress that instead of just not doing nothing and leave him alone or trying to make friends, they just want to get rid of him. They want to curse him. They want to go to war with him. And we're going to read. We're going to read a little bit more on that. But because of that, okay, God didn't allow that. And we're going to read. He didn't allow that. He didn't allow that. And this is why they went to uh, Balaam. Okay, this is why in verse 5, you see them going to him. Because look, in verse 6, it says, Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Preadventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land, for what, for I what? that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. So you see, the king of Moab went to Balaam to curse him, just like in Deuteronomy 23 said. He wanted the blessing to go to war with them and win. Okay? He wanted that. He wanted that. Okay? Let's continue to read. 7. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination, uh, 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 or divination. In their hand, and they came unto Balaam, or Balaam, and spoke unto him the words of Balak, or ba, uh, Balak, Balak. Now, the rewards, uh, the reward, reward just means fee. Okay, so the fee of divination, or the uh, the fee of, of of the oracle, right? So he went with to him, giving him money, asking him to curse these people. Okay, kind of like um, uh, how do I say, uh, tr trying to um bribe you know trying to bribe to get his way and we're going to read that he actually tried really hard to do that so in verse 8 it says and he said unto them lodge here this night and i will bring you word again as yahuwah or the lord shall speak unto me and the princes of moab abode with balaam or balaam so here's balaam saying hey i'm gonna uh, uh stay here i'm gonna you know at night we're gonna i'm gonna speak to the father the father's gonna tell me and i'll reveal it to you and in verse 9 it says and God came unto Balaam, or Balaam, 
and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, have sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Preadventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, or Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, or Balak, Get you into your land, for Yahuwah, or the Lord, refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went into Balak, and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more, and more honorable than they. And they came to ba Balaam, and said unto him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder you from coming unto me. For I will promote you unto very great honor, and will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Uh, thou sayest to me, Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Stop right there. Stop right there. This is, this is important. Because you see, Balaam just got the word of Yahuwah saying, Don't go with them. These people are blessed. Don't touch them. Okay? But what does Balak say? Oh, that's not good enough. No, 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 no. Listen. I'm sending you even more important people to flatter you, you know, to flatter. Not only that, but I'm promising you, this is Balak's promising a, 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 a glorious promotion of very great honor. And whatever you say to him, right? So he's like bribing him. Full on bribery at this point. Bribery at his greatest right here. Trying to bribe him. And I thought this was interesting. Because his bribe at the end says, what? Come, I pray thee, curse me this people. So he wants this uh, Balaam to give him the blessing to go fight these people, to curse these people so that he can go and win. So he's bribing. Now, I find this interesting because when we look in Scripture, and the first verse I want to go to is Matthew chapter 4, that the enemy, uh, Hasatan, Satan, this is what he does. This is what he does. And he uses the world to do this. He uses the world to do this. He uses it to tempt us to get his way. So in Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, it says, Again the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kings in the world, and the glory of him, or glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give you, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So, this verse is just showing this is a tactic the enemy uses. Just like what the king of Moab just did to Balaam, trying to entice him, trying to bribe him. The enemy does this as well. Satan does this as well. The devil does this. He uses the world to do it. I've been in multiple situations where people try to bribe to get you to do what they want you to do, especially when it goes against God. We have to say no. We have to stay strong. And this is why I love Balaam's answer in the next verse. I love Balaam's answer. But before we go to that next verse, I just want to throw another one out there. And it's still in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And it's verse 26. And it says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? This is important to understand. Because when the enemy does this, he wants you to lose your salvation. He wants you to fall. He wants you never to come to the Messiah and to the Father. And he will use the world. And the Messiah is showing here, what, what is a profit? If you gain the world, but you lose your soul. You gain the world and you lose your salvation? What, what shall a man, this is rhetorical, what shall a man exchange for his salvation or his soul? So this is something we need to be on guard on. Okay, just like here in this this event, this story in Numbers chapter 22, when we talk about Balaam, we have to be on guard and we have to answer just like how Balaam answered, just like how he answered. And we're going to read that. But one more verse, and that's in Luke, Luke chapter four, verse six, Luke chapter four, verse six. And it says, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give you and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whosoever I will give it. So again, bribery, bribery. 
So when we go back, right, when we go back to the book of Numbers and we go back to verse 17, book of Numbers, that's uh, verse 17. After he's enticing him with this promotion, look what his response is. Balaam's response is perfect. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of Yahuwah or the Lord my God to do less or more. I love his response. His response is perfect because that is how we need to respond to these things. The enemy is going to entice us with everything possible. Gold, money, promotions, you name it. He's going to get us to do the things that are outside the will of God. But we have to answer just like Balaam answered. No, it doesn't matter what you give me. That's basically what he's saying. It doesn't matter what you give me. You can give me the whole house of gold and silver. You can give me all of it. But I will not. I will not go against the word of the Lord or Yahuwah. I love his reply. His reply is great. And it reminds me of the verse in the book of John. In John, John chapter 5, verse 44 John chapter 5, verse 44, it says, It says, How can you believe which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor that cometh from God alone? So here's what we need to be putting in our mind, right? Instead of seeking that promotion for himself and that honor that, that the king of Moab would have gave ba- Balaam, instead of seeking that, he rather seek, uh, he was seeking the honor of God. And that's what we should only be seeking. His glory, his will, his word. The enemy's going to use these tactics. He has been using them. He has been using them. Look at this. Look at this. Look what he's trying to do with Balaam now. Balaam now. He's trying to get him to do what is not right. He's trying to go against what God already told him not to do by enticing him, by bribery. But we're going to see where Balaam went wrong here in a little bit. Let's go back. Numbers chapter 22, verse 19 now. Now therefore I pray you, tarry you also here this night, that I may know what Yahuwah will say unto me. More. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shall thou do. So here he is doing it again. He's inquiring of the Lord again, or Yahuwah again. And the reason why he's inquiring again is because, you know, you know, a promotion, high honor. It doesn't, I won't go against God, but let me just consult him again, right? He's consulting him again. And the father is pretty clear. Don't go again. Uh, in verse 20, and God came to Balaam that night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, and this is what they're saying, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shall thou do. So what he's saying doesn't matter what those other people are asking. Now, 20 can be a little bit confusing. 20, when people read it, they think God is the one who said, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. So God's saying, hey, go with them. But you can go with them, but I'm I'm telling you, no, uh, you keep my word. Now, I just want to throw this out there. Again, this is written in Hebrew. So when we look up the Hebrew, it, uh, what's, uh, what the father is saying here is, and God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to say rise up right if the men come to say rise up and go with me or with them don't do it this is why i say this right not only in the hebrew doesn't you know show that in other translations of the king james version uh, such as the scriptures rv but when we go to verse 22 uh when we get to verse 22 we're going to see that the father was angry now check this out in verse 21 and balaam rose up in the morning and he saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of Yahuwah stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his, his donkey or his ass. And his two servants were with him. So this is why, the, because there's, there can be two perspectives. One is the father said that if, you know, if they tell him rise up and go with them, you can go with them. But you keep my word. But then the other aspect that I'm throwing out here is why would it be upset if he said it was okay for him to go? Now, you could say it's because his intent was different. 
But I just want to keep it as simple as possible, especially when we look up other translations in the Hebrew, uh, from the Hebrew, uh, that God didn't want him to go at all. Because what did the father say previously? What we read is in verse 12, And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. So we don't want to contradict. And I know God doesn't contradict. And and why would the father be angry at him for going if he told him to go in verse 20? Well, this is the perspective I'm showing, is the fact that he told him not to go. In verse 20, it says, And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to you, uh, come to call you, rise up and go with them. So he's saying, if the men come to you and say, come, come with us, or rise up, come with us, or rise up, come with them, right? Don't do it. And that's the perspective I was trying to uh, bring out there. So there's, there's no, no confusion because the father made it clear previously, you're not going. And then he was angry after he went. So you can see where this is at. So in verse 22, the father was angry and was kindled because he went. And the angel, he sent an angel and stood in the way for an adversary against him. Because the reason why he was an adversary is because Balaam was doing the opposite of what God wanted. If you do the will of God, you're not his adversary. You're not his adversary. What, what did the Messiah say, uh, say about the uh, disciples came to him and said, Hey, these people are, are casting out demons in, in your name, and they're not a part of our group. And what did the Messiah say? If they're not against us, then they're for us. All right? So I want to throw out a verse here in Second Peter. Second Peter. And it is chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. And it says... Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Belem, the son of Bazor, uh, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb donkey, speaking with man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. Now, I love this because it says what Balaam's doing here is madness. <laughs> it's madness. The father told him not to do it. The father, But he's doing it. And this is where I think he went wrong here. Balaam shouldn't have went. And I think the reason why he went uh, specifically was because the promise of a possible promotion of the bribery. Now, he didn't take it because his response was good. I liked his response in in Numbers 22, verse 18. But that temptation was before him. That temptation was before him. And you see that in Scripture, in 2 Peter, it, it, it shows that this was... Uh, 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 Balaam going astray, right? Following the way of Balaam, doing, you know, forsaking the right way. So Balaam knows the right way. Of course he knows. The father told him. But he was forsaking it so that he can kind of, you know, have his way a little bit. And uh, what's interesting here is that's how, you know, Satan, the enemy, can really use certain things to entice you. Now, everyone has weaknesses, and the enemy knows this. And he will use what he can to get you to do it. And it may be something innocent, right? It may be something innocent. It may be something like, oh, that's not really that bad if I just go with them, right? If I just, this is what I, I'm, I'm assuming, okay? I'm assuming. But this is what I, I, I picture when I look at my own life here. Oh, they're enticing me just to go with them to this party where there could be more. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with them because... We'll see. If there's anything there, I'm not going to do it. But I'll just go with them. It's like enticing. I'm allowing that temptation. Uh, and I know I shouldn't go. Um, there's things there that's going to make uh, probably make me do uh, contrary to what God wants me to do. Uh, but I go anyway. So this is like uh, Balaam. Balaam here is is <laughs> he's 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 going when he was told not to. And he's now it's the second Peter calls it madness. Right? Because the donkey, it says in verse 16 of Second Peter chapter 2, the donkey were speaking with a man's voice and forbade the madness of, uh, of the prophet. So forbade Balaam's madness for doing this. And we're going to read and we're going to continue more. But this is how the Satan, Satan uses it. It could be something so simple. But if the father tells you no, don't do it. If the Bible says no, don't do it. Don't do it. You could be found being an adversary to the father you could be found not doing his will you can be found madness it's absolute madness what are you doing let's continue read 
And the and the ass or donkey saw the angel of Yahuwah standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the donkey to turn his, turn her into the way. But the angel of Yahuwah stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on his side and a wall on the other side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Yahuwah, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. And he smote her again. And the angel of Yahuwah, or the Lord, went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn, either to the right hand or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of Yahuwah, or the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam, Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with the staff. He smote the ass with the staff. Now notice, notice in this situation that Balaam automatically doesn't like what the donkey's doing. And I think he's wrong here. And this is why I think he's wrong. If we go to the verse in Proverbs, verse 14. In Proverbs, let me get that here. Proverbs uh, chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. Chapter 14, 16 and 17. It says, A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. So something important to keep in mind here, right? A wise man feareth, right? A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but a fool rageth and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. And this is why I think Balaam was foolish here. He became angry. He didn't assess the situation to why the donkey was doing what he was doing. He wasn't being wise with at all trying to figure out the situation. He was just angry the donkey wasn't doing what he told him to do. And he was confident to continue forward, not thinking twice on his decision. Not thinking twice on his decision. And he was angry right off the bat, smiting the donkey, hitting the donkey, being upset with the donkey. Right? Let's go to another one uh, in the same chapter, uh, Proverbs 14, verse 29. Verse 29, he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Sometimes, well, and I can say this from experience, when we get angry, right? When we get angry or really, really upset, we can let go sometimes. And that's not right. That's not right. We should be long-suffering. We should be patient. Patient. We should not be quick to anger, but slow to anger. Why? Because when you're slow to anger you have time to think think of the words that are going to leave your mouth the actions that you're going to do when you do it hastily and you're just angry right off the bat you start to say things you regret you start to do things you regret you actually look like a fool when you may do it out of haste and i think this is a principle here to us i i I see a principle here that in this situation if we are in a situation like this probably not a donkey but in a, a situation similar Stop, pray, examine what you're doing, look around, think. For instance, if I had a vehicle, right, and the, and the vehicle is giving me issues, it, it's giving me issues, it would start, but then stop and start and then stop, and I'm freaking out. And I actually had this, uh, I'm speaking from experience because I actually had a situation like this where I was actually traveling to do a, 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 some Bible meetings in North Carolina, and my engine was perfect, Nothing's wrong with my engine. I take care of my vehicles. And as I was driving, all of a sudden, a misfire happens. I can't get far. There's like no speed, uh, no power. So I pulled over. uh, And I have a a, a computer reader for the check engine lights. And I checked it. And it was a misfire. Can't do anything. So I headed home. And it was misfiring. But then it started again. But then misfire. And then it started again. I got home, though. I got home. And later I found out that it works. It works fine. So I don't know what was going on, but I was upset because this is why the kicker, I already replaced the spark plugs in that vehicle. I replaced the coil packs, actually, not the spark plugs, the coil packs that makes the ignition, uh, the, 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 the shock, uh, the, the spark to the spark plugs. And it, 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 I replaced all of them and I was angry because it didn't work. But this is what I learned from this, that experience. Down the road, there was a car accident, and I could have been a part of that car accident. I could have been a part of that car accident, but because in the moment, I didn't stop 
to think, to consult the father, I automatically was upset. Oh, this stupid car, why is it not working? I just did this. What's the point? Why is this happening right now? No, God has a reason. There's always a plan, right? This is why we should be slow to anger so we can examine it. Because I believe if Balaam was slow to anger here and he examined the situation to why this donkey isn't moving, he would have realized what was happening. But he realized after, after the donkey's mouth was open. Let's continue to read. And Yahuwah opened, Yahuwah opened the mouth of the, uh, the donkey, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto you that you have smitten me, uh, uh, hit me these three times? So f- I like it's interesting. It doesn't say the father put these words in the mouth. It says the father just opened the donkey's mouth. So the donkey kind of spoke, uh, you know, what the donkey was already thinking. So I, th- I, th- I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and the donkey's like, what are you doing? Why are you hitting me? And check this out. In verse 29, Balaam responded, or Balaam said unto the, the ass, because, you has, uh, because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. This is how angry Balaam is right now. This is how angry, first of all, I would be surprised that a donkey is talking. <laughs> first of all, the donkey is talking. But, He's angry that he's willing to kill this donkey just because the donkey didn't want to go forward. Let's go to Proverbs 12 for this. Uh, Proverbs 12, verse 10. Let's look what the scripture talks about. It says, Proverbs 12, verse 10. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Was Balaam, was Balaam following what this verse says? A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast? No, he wasn't. Just because the beast didn't want to continue, he wanted to kill him. Forget about the beast talking. Just just angry that he's not doing what he wants to, to do. Let's continue to read. And the ass, or donkey, said unto Balaam, Am not I your donkey upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was with you? And he said, Nay. Now, I want to check this out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's check this verse out. First Corinthians chapter one, and it's verse one. Oh no, yeah, First yeah. Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-seven. Verse twenty-seven, and we're going to read to twenty-eight. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, the things which are not to bring to not things that are. So here you have a, a Paul saying that God uses things. He may use foolish things. The foolish things of the world to confound wise people. He may use these weak things to confound mighty people. So here you have a donkey. He's using the donkey. The father is using the donkey to reveal that there's an angel with the sword drawn in front of Balaam, giving Balaam a chance, giving Balaam mercy. The father didn't have to, but the father did it. That's how loving he is. He is giving mercy. He's giving mercy to Balaam to reveal this to him, to open the mouth of the donkey, to stop him from going further, to stop him from going further. Let's continue to read verse 31. Then Yahuwah, or the Lord, opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of Yahuwah, or the Lord, standing in the way, and his sword was drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell on his face. Now Balaam understands. Now Balaam knows what's going on. He knows what's going on. And verse 22, it says, And the angel of Yahuwah, the Lord, said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten your, your donkey these three times? Why? Right? Let's continue. Behold, I went out to withstand you, because the way is perverse before me. His way is perverse before this angel. Why? Because he's doing what God didn't want him to do. Doing what he didn't want him to do. Let's go to another verse for this. In Proverbs. In Proverbs 28 verse 18. Proverbs 28 verse 18. It says. Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved. But he that is perverse in the ways shall fall at once. Shall fall at once. So this this way that Balaam's choosing to go with them 
against what God wanted him to do is perverse. It's madness. It's madness. Let's continue to read. And the donkey saw me. This is the angel speaking. And the donkey saw me and turned from thee three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. So the donkey saved his life. The donkey saved his life. But he was angry. He was angry. He didn't realize what was happening until he finally saw the angel. Until it was pretty much almost too late. Verse 34. And Balaam said unto the angel, O Yahuwah, or the Lord, uh, angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, it is dis- it, if it displeased thee, I will go back. I'll go back. So now Balaam understands what he did wrong. He understands what he did wrong. And now he's like, I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back. But look at what the angel says. Actually, before what the angel says, let's look up a verse real quick. John chapter 34. The book of John. And we're going to go to chapter 30, oh, 34. Job. Ooh, John. Job. I wrote Job. Job <laughs> chapter 34. And it's verse 31 to 32. And it says, Surely it is me to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see not teach thou me, if I have done. Oh wait, that which I see not teach thou me, if I have done iniquity, I will do no more. So here's the father being faithful, faithful to his 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 servant here, the, the prophet Balaam, and coming to him and saying, showing him what's wrong, showing what's wrong, using the donkey. Just show him what's wrong. And here we read in Job that the, he's asking, the things that I don't see, please teach me. The things that are wrong, teach me. If I've done iniquity, I will do it no more. And you see how Balaam was like, I'll go back. I'll go back. I'll go back. So it is a blessing that the Father chastises us so that we will learn and offend no more, just like in Job. Job says and we see Balaam doing that saying I'll go back I'll go back I'm wrong he he now sees that he's wrong and he's like I'll go back verse 35 and the angel of you who has said unto Balaam go with the men now see now he's saying go with the men but only the word that I will speak unto thee that thou shalt speak so Balaam uh, uh, thou shalt speak so Balaam went with the princes of Balak so now he went with them now he's getting the the order but he's saying you only going to speak what I told you right and when Be- uh, Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him from the city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the uttermost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I, did I not earnestly send unto you to call thee? Wherefore comest thou not unto me? I am, uh, am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? So he's upset that he didn't come earlier, but he's there and Balaam said unto Balak lo I am come unto thee have I now any power at all to say anything the word that God putteth in my mouth that I shall speak now that's Balaam's response the word that God puts in my mouth I will speak verse 39 and Balaam went with Balak and they came unto uh, Kerjahosoth again butchering it and they came, uh, and Balak offered oxen and sheep and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of ba- uh, Baal, that thence he might see the uttermost part of the people. And Balaam, and the verse, this is chapter 23, verse 1, And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak, 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 <laughs> did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and ba- Balaam offered an uh, uh, ever, uh, offered an ever every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by the burnt offering, and I will go. Preadventure Yahuwah or the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell you. And he went to the high place, and God met with Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And Yahuwah, or the Lord, put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, 
uh, burnt sacrifice, and he and all the princes of Moab, and he took up his parable and said, Balak the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram, Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, curse me, uh, come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how should I defy whom Yahuwah hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold, I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die in the death of the righteous, and let, let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, now you bless them altogether? So here's, here's the thing. So Balaam went and he did exactly, exactly what he was supposed to do. He spoke what the father wanted. He had to learn from his mistake previously, but he spoke. And Balak's like, what are you doing? I brought you here to curse them. But now you're blessing them? Again, this is not him blessing him. It's the father blessing him. We should be left alone. That's what he's saying. They're going to be left alone. But of course, Balak doesn't want that. Balak doesn't want that. He goes two more times, three times total. Three times when Balaam arrives, three more times he tries this. The first time we just read and two more times. He does the same thing and it's always the same outcome. I have blessed these people. Don't touch them. But Balak doesn't want that. Balak does not want that. God was trying to steer this Moab king away from what he wanted to do. But the Moab king didn't want it. Multiple times. And what does Balaam say later on in Numbers 23, verse 19? God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make good? So this is when the king of Moab, Be uh, Be uh, Balak, or Balak, was pushing Balaam to curse these people. He's like, no, God doesn't lie doesn't lie. It doesn't matter how many times I console him. It's going to be the same word. So God doesn't lie. He's not a man that he lies. And whatever he says, shall it not be good? It's going to happen. Look at all the promises we read earlier in the chapter. He promised to put fear and trembling in the uh, enemy uh, in the other nations so that they don't touch Israel. He, he promised that. He promised to take care of them, to watch over them, protect them. And this is what he's doing. And I find it interesting that it was three times in verse 10 of chapter 24 of Numbers, it says, And Balak's Bele anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I call thee to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them these three times. So he didn't stop. He wanted him to do what he wanted, not what God wanted. Not what God wanted. He wanted to do what he wanted. And what does Balaam answer again in verse 13 of Numbers 24? It says, if Balak would give me his, uh, his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahuwah to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what Yahuwah or the Lord saith will I speak. So, when we look at this story, there's so much for us to learn. Not only that the Father keeps his promises, then he'll protect us. That he'll protect us. But we can't... We have to be slow to anger. Analyze our surroundings. Because you never know when something's happening. It could be happening for your attention. For you to examine. For you to pray. For you to go to him. Ask for what's going on. Instead of just being angry and pushing and pushing. Before it's too late. And don't forget the little things can teach us. And we should be happy that we receive chastisement from, from the Father. Because the scripture says, whom he loveth he chastises. And because we learn from these things, we turn away from them with that. And we need to keep these things in mind. We have to remember that the enemy uses uh, nice things, money, uh, power, uh, fame, honor, everything to try to get us to fall. Just like how Balak tried to buy his own way. He wanted a cursing, so he's going to pay him a fee for that. No. The father is very clear. And I find it also interesting. And this is uh, another study. Balaam is a descendant of Esau's line. He was not a descendant of Abraham. He was not an Israelite. But yet he was a prophet of Yahuwah, the Lord. 
It was a prophet of Yahuwah the Lord. And it's important to, to understand that. But that's a whole other study um, of itself. But it's important. Please go back and read this for yourself. And I, I pray that this is a blessing for you. Continue to go through this. There's so many verses that I haven't even touched yet. But I just wanted to touch the main ones that touched me. The ones that made me think and go, what have I done? Thinking that something is okay and allowing it to happen when it was just going to bring me to because I wanted it. I desired it. And that's what ba- I, I, I see that's what Balaam did. He went with them because, hey, I, you know, could get a promotion. What's wrong with me just going with them? The father told you not to. The father wants your attention. And that's what we need to remember. We need to stand right, just like Balaam stood right when he said, no, it doesn't matter what you give me. I'm going to do what the father says. But don't turn back on that. You stay on that. You hold firm to what the father told you. You do not. You do not want to be Balaam and go against what God said. You don't want to do that. And thank God that Balaam turned away and that Balaam was that God opened his eyes to see that angel so that he can turn away from his his doing and repent and still be used to do the work. So I pray this was a blessing. Uh, And again, stay in the scriptures, guys. Stay in the scripture. Amen. Hallelujah.